What's up, kids? Today is something. Why do I keep calling you kids? What's up, people? <laughs> All right, so today I have something. I, it might be a stretch to call it special. It's definitely new and different. Something that I haven't done here before. The gist is this, is that I gave a talk to a group here locally called the Squeeze Art Collective and uh, other people that happen to want to come by and listen to it. We had a conversation regarding the process of art and specifically my process. And it was a little bit different than you might anticipate. At least I tried to make it a little bit different than maybe you would anticipate. I wasn't talking about these things so much as these things. So I'm not gonna dilly dally because this one's gonna be a little bit longer than most. It's about 17 minutes-ish long. It's me just standing up front of the stage. The lighting isn't great. The sound quality isn't perfect. The angle of the camera was not the best, but I believe it was a good conversation and now I'm going to share it here with you. Enjoy. This guy, what an interesting vibe. That was an interesting last minute vibe, for sure. <laughs> I'm gonna kick this one up, uh, up a little bit though, for sure. Like, so, Derek said, my name's Dave, and uh, uh, when he asked me to do this, well, I was eager to do it, and I asked him uh, first, like, what do you want me to talk about? Um, and he, you know, said, like, you know, like, just express your process and process of your work and whatnot. But, but I knew that there was, like, a, a loose interpretation of that idea. Uh, because you know we, I've watched some of the other ones and it's and it's been more interesting peanut gallery talking in the background mm -hmm. so, <laughs> and so I, I thought about that and I've actually been very um, uh, very thoughtful of that idea like what is this about like because I could talk about the art and the process of the art for a while but I don't know if that's in, entirely the whole reason why I do what I do right? um, and I'll talk about that more in a minute but I was gonna go through this whole process of like the whole, the five W's, the who, what, when, where, why, you know, but it's like, it's, they're so close, so it's, everybody's so intimate here. So just to give you a little background on me, my artistic career was reinvigorated in 2006, after a long hiatus of not doing any visual art. I had a background, I have a background in graphic arts, graphic design, art direction, I worked with magazine publishing for years, and uh, that, if you've ever worked, if you know anybody who's ever worked in publishing, you know that it seems very glamorous at times, but it becomes very production oriented. And there was a certain point in the work that I loved doing, but at a certain point that I realized that if I didn't do something creative fast, I was gonna lose the creative sense, because everything was just production. It was like I was just pushing out pages for this magazine, because I had to do a 300 page magazine every single month all by myself. As far as laying it out. Laying it out, art direction, you know, all the, everything relating, you know, typesetting, everything was all me. The only thing I didn't do was like the ads. They placed the ads themselves, but all the editorial was all me. And so, like, it was just a machine, just banging up pages, banging up pages every single day. And you do that long enough, and it will kill your motivation to do creative things. And so I started diving into, I said, I'm gonna go get a canvas. And I hadn't done any traditional fine arts in school. So I didn't know the first, like my first instinct was, I better do abstracts, right? Because <laughs> I, I have no basis to do anything else. So that's what I did. I started and I was doing like a lot of ombre, you know, kind of like uh, just basically color theory oriented work. And then I started, as I was doing that, an interesting thing started happening is I started incorporating what I was learning of the color theory into the design work that I was doing. And then as that was getting and growing, like I started incorporating the design work that I was doing and the design elements back into my art. And that has kind of become the process of my art ever since. And as you see, like I incorporate a lot of typography into my work because of my background in graphic design. But I also like the idea of having a message, whether it's an abstract message or something that's more literal. And there's one that doesn't have a message on it, so ignore that one. But, <laughs> but so that's kind of where I came from or how, where I've been coming from and where I've been progressing through with the work that I do now. And as you see, there's 
different types of work going up here now. And these pieces here are my, this is my, well, not that one, the, the assemblages, which is basically like mixed media collage on top of board panels, like that one. And that's what I do mostly. And some of you have probably seen it up at, you know, when I've showcased it at uh, First Fridays. But when I started this year, I knew I wanted to kind of dive a little deeper and go a little bit more um, into figurative work and use people. And so instead of pulling elements from magazines, I start pulling elements of my own stuff and maybe mixing that as collage. So I draw something on a piece of paper and then add that into my art. But I wanted it to be something well, that I, I needed to develop that work better and so I started this project in April called the 100 day challenge or it's called the 100 day project where I did something every single day for 100 days and it started I just wanted to draw figures of women because every other woman that had drawn in the past looked very masculine in nature and I wanted to kind of refine that so I started drawing more women to try to refine that but as I was going along what I noticed is the visceral aspect of me pulling text from magazines or things that I would hear and I'd write those down ended up having this very empowerment, uh, feminist oriented um, message completely by accident. But as Paula had kind of explained, had addressed earlier, it's like it was almost intrinsic in me because of my background, because I was raised by a single mom, I'm married to a very independent woman and I have a lot of strong women in my life. And I just went with it. And that's kind of been where I'm at now. Now, it's taking what I'm learning from these, and I'm gonna bring these back to the other pieces that I'm doing very soon. As soon as I finish this 100 days, which is July 12th is the actual day, but I'm gonna try and kick it up a notch and see if I can finish it by first Fridays so I can have it all displayed. That's the goal, fingers crossed. I gotta, I gotta really kind of bang those out, right? I gotta, I gotta do, basically I gotta do some five extra pieces every, you know, like for the next few days. But. Uh, so anyway, so that's what I do. Process regarding that, to me, is, for the most part, it's, I love it, I enjoy it, but I think it's not necessarily, though, this art is only one segment of what I consider is my art. And these works, this is just a byproduct of who I am as a, as a person, and the work that I put out is bigger than just whatever goes onto some substrate. And the way I, I've been viewing this, and when I was asked the quote, when he told me, like, process, I was thinking, like, what is my process? And it's, the way I look at it is that my art is everything that I do. It's this work, it's the work I do on video, it's the work I do when I'm standing in front of talking to somebody about the artwork. It's when I get on a podcast and I talk to somebody about my art or my, my ideas there. It's when I meet an artist in the street and I can talk to them and encourage them and then support them. It's where I can get up and basic, without any fear, without any qualms, talk about my, the, the problems I'm suffering through, the, the issues that I might be dealing with, the... Uh, the struggles, the pain, that even the, you know, like, or all the positive aspects of that too. Like if I'm talking about learning something new or getting over some sort of hump or expressing myself in a way that not only helps me understand fully what I'm doing, but when somebody listens to that, whether it's on my video blog, it's in my Instagram post, it's on my Instagram stories, my Snapchat stories, it's me standing in front of a group of people like this. It's like I get up here and I know that my art is the ability to stand here and express myself in a way that encourages other people to further their thing, to want to go further with whatever they're doing, to get past these blockades that they may have, whether it's um, blocks in the actual creative process or just blocks in like wanting to post new things, wanting to share that fear of selling it to somebody putting it up on whatever marketplace that they need to get into so that they can actually have their art for sale, you know? Getting past the idea of, well, my stuff's not worth of selling more than $100 or whatever it might be. And so that has been an interesting process for me because it took me almost 46 years, well, 
to realize that's where my true art is. This, although fun and interesting, is merely a byproduct of everything else that I'm doing. And I believe that what my true gift, what my true skill, what my true talent is not just to, to be some fine artist and to display my work in some gallery, but rather to stand up here or stand up on, on a bigger stage or get in front of uh, some other, somebody else's video camera and be able to talk to people so that I can resonate, so that I can encourage them, like, you should go do the same thing. You should go pick that thing that you need to do and chase after that. And so that's kind of been my motivator, my, my you know, singular thing. And I actually, one thing that I noticed is when I displayed these works, one of those, the, the, the women, when I displayed them and talked about them, you know, and the idea of them being about strong women, the, the eyes of the women would light up, like light up in such a way that it's almost like I was changing part of their life like there's something going on back there they wouldn't i didn't get any stories but there were definitely some people there that i felt like they found something in me in that moment that made them realize that it's not just them fighting that battle but there's other people that, that understand what they're going through there's other people that know that they're fighting tough battles with whatever their situation might be and then that might have encouraged them to go do something about that. Maybe it was just to get up and go do their own thing and be okay with it and not be held back by their friends. Maybe it was, in certain circumstances, leaving somebody who is probably not that great to them. You know? Or just feeling better about themselves because of whatever um, you know, inadequacy they may feel. And that, when it, those moments, just standing there in front of those people, Talking to them like that and having them light up, like that to me is way, way, way cooler than just having my art up on the wall. And I feel like that's definitely the thing. Like I will always do art. I will do art for the rest of my life. I know that for a fact. But if I was just doing art, just posting it up, then I think that I would be not living up to my full potential. And I think that no matter what I do display, it's only going to be a fraction of what my true uh, capability and ability and my, you know, my message to be displayed, my message to be shared, you know. So, so that's what drives me. That's the process. That's the idea. It's building this idea, this legacy um, of helpfulness, you know, inspiration, you know, um, encouragement, and solidarity whether it's with artists or women or whatever. That's, yeah, that's kind of the key thing. Um, I totally, like, jumped right through most of everything I was going to talk about because I just move it so quickly. Um, Do you have, like, do you have other works besides the slideshow? I, no, pretty much because I do, I do, but I didn't want to step back in history. I actually thought about that. That's an interesting, that's an interesting point. Because, you know, I wanted to, I thought about it. Should I have shown the whole process? Should I have shown from the original abstracts all the way till now? And does that, would that really have mattered for the whole thing? And I thought about it for a while. No, you know, like I'm just going to show the most contemporary work, the stuff that I've been doing as of late, because I think it kind of, especially pieces like that, that um, that truly represents more about what I'm doing, right, as a whole, right. I'm, like if you go, and I'll show you guys my links to my stuff or whatever, but if you see my YouTube videos and watch any of that, and then look at this while you're watching a video or after you watch one of my what after watch a video then go see some more then it makes a lot more cohesive sense because it's almost like this by itself is just okay good it's great i like what you're doing it's cool but to understand the whole thing it's like you have to see like my performance is goes beyond this but then these 
what I've done here today, if I go to a year from now or two years from now, these will almost be like insignificant compared to what I'm doing next. You know, and it's all going to be based on where I'm at and how I'm driving myself forward, how I'm pushing and how I'm growing, not just as an artist, but also as an influence. And that's, that's a big thing. So like I, I look back, I started my vlog, my video vlog on YouTube in April of last year. And I'm almost at episode 100 of those. And looking back to where I was there, like starting there and moving forward now, I told myself when I first started that one that I was gonna do it for at least 36 months, three years. I was gonna give myself three years to really be truly dedicated to this idea. And not necessarily say like at the end of 36 months, like, like well, I didn't quite get what I wanted to, so I'm gonna just quit. Not that, but rather super focused and dedicated for those three years, 36 months, and then at the end of that 36 months, be able to look at it and say, okay, did I get what I wanted? Did I achieve what, where I was going? Am I seeing the growth that I'm looking for? If not, how do I pivot? How do I change? How do I make that work? And so just in that first, what is it now, 14 months, that it's just like, it's, even though it hasn't, maybe hasn't grown quite as quickly as I wanted it to, it's definitely been an interesting, um, it's been an interesting journey so far. So much though, that I know for a fact, without a doubt, that I'm gonna be doing this for the rest of my life. I absolutely know it, without a shadow of a doubt. And that's why it just feels right. It feels like, you know, I was, we were talking with Jennifer about knowing, understanding, finding the current, right? Knowing what your skill is, knowing what your pattern is, and, and I just like, in that last year, just like, God, this feels just perfect. It feels good. And having work up on a gallery wall is, is really interesting to me, but it's not gonna determine where I go you know, it's only going to be one factor in the thing. Or having a art on a box would be awesome to have that, especially here in Long Beach. Have one, have a box here in Long Beach. That's pretty rad to have your stuff in there permanently. Well, you know, permanently, right? <laughs> right. At least as, as permanent as it could, right? As permanent as it could be, um, that'd be great, right? But it's just, a, it's just another, it's another peg in the, in the hole, you know, to, to get you further along, and and so that's the process, constantly documenting, constantly showing where I'm at now, what I'm doing next, how can this help somebody else? Even if like, you know, if we're all climbing this proverbial ladder of wherever you want to call it success or just creative inspiration or, or you know, finding your magnum opus, whatever, we're all climbing that ladder and like knowing that I'm not at the top yet, I'm still climbing, I'm, in, I'm gonna be somewhere in the middle, but there's maybe somebody that's a rung behind me that I'm helping pull up, you know? And that's kind of what drives me. Because right? uh, it's not about money, it's not about fame. Right? It's not about any of that for me. It's about doing what I love and then helping other people to do the same thing. So, so yeah, that is the art to me. And then this, this is the process. <laughs> So that's all there is to it. I hope you enjoyed that. I would really like to know what you thought. If you feel the same, if you feel different, if you have any other questions for me regarding my process. We did a Q&A there for a little bit, but uh, the camera turned off and I didn't get most of it. So I didn't get to share that, but I would really like to hear what you guys have to think. Let's continue the conversation. Until next time, folks, remember, be good today, be better tomorrow. See ya. <laughs> so contrived.